What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Sakina, and I'm back for another review. This is my review for Bell Collective. This is season one, episode seven. Yes, y'all, this is my third review that I've done today. I'm really just trying to push them out for y'all because I want to have a free Saturday of doing nothing but laying here in this bed. I might go and get, like, a, a favorite vegan meal of mine that I'm craving, but, you know, who knows? Like, like I said, I just want to chill. Anyway, let's get into this review so we can get it out the way. It opens up with the person that we want to see the least, right? Karen. And she has invited Latrice, Mel, and Antoinette down to some type of farm for um a uh, ladies day or something like that a uh, uh, girls day some shit anyway they down there um it's goats and it's tur turkeys child chickens and all kind of farm animals so i guess they're gonna do this kfc style child obviously i'm sleepy because there wasn't no damn chickens in sight not from what i seen but nonetheless yes they're there at a farm because Karen is looking for a goat and she said that she was getting a goat because she didn't want to mow her lawn anymore. Like Latrice said, baby, that is some Caucasian mess for your ass, okay? Because, I mean, okay, now they there and I guess she's gonna find a goat and the farmer, the, the perk of this, the farmer is actually a black woman. So I'm here for that. But other than that, baby, let's move on with this scene. Latrice went on to tell them about, you know, what was going on with Cliff. It wasn't really nothing to it. I was just laughing when she said, come on, little Clifferella. Like, come on, you better give him the ghetto name. <laughs> we see Marie and she's at her house. She had called the therapist down to her house because she wants to have a family therapy session. So she wants to have Drez and his baby mother to attend. She said she also wanted to have Cedric in attendance, but he's not there. And I'm wondering... <coughs> I'm wondering why she wanted him there anyway, because Jerez is not his son. Like, I don't know how long Cedric has been in Jerez's life, but I really didn't get the need for him to be there. And I'm wondering too, where the hell is this other baby mama? Where's the third one? Okay, because we got Peanut and Yvette there, but where is this third one? I don't know, but you got three kids and we only done seen two. Jerez, where the other one at, please? Okay, so Baby Mama 3 isn't in attendance because she wasn't able to make it. Okay, whatever. Now, Marie, you know, you look real cute. You know, I'm loving your little fashion over jumpsuit with your little, you know, finger waves in your hair, your face beat. She's such a pretty woman to me. Um, But this is where you got me messed up, ma'am. Why do you feel like... Okay, let me just give y'all the background. Now, she's talking to the Baby Mamas and she was saying, you know... I understand y'all come to me for help, but I need y'all to go directly to Jerez. And Jerez should be the one to tell me, oh, the girls need this, the girls need that. Why do you want to be the middleman? You're still having him depend on you for his responsibilities. No, you need to cut ties. That's what you need to do because she's talking about some, you know, y'all shouldn't even know where the money came from. No, you're still trying to save your son. Now, he just said that he was trying to do what he can, you know, with him being in school and all of that to take care of his kids. And he wants to, he wants them to have a father because he knows what it's like to have one. But I'm like, Jerez, really? Because if that's the case, you would have went to college locally. Like, there was other options for you. You fled the scene and went hours away. So, really, do you want to be a part of your son's lives as much as you want to, you know, make it out to see him on TV? Baby, no, ain't no middleman shit. Cut yourself out of it and make him step the fuck up and take care of his children. My heart really, really, really hurts for Marie. Hearing her story, you know, she said that she wants to be there for the kids. And if it was up to her, all three of them would be in her home. But the thing is, with her lupus, it's not really helping the situation. She said not only does she have lupus, but she also has fibromyalgia, which is like basically a condition that heightens your pain. So she takes 12 medications a day and an injection. And when she does that, it's really hard for her to function throughout the day. And she said when she does have the babies, she skips out on her medication just so she can be alert to take care of them. And that shit just really hurts my spirit, y'all. Like, they're so scary, especially when she said that her health is declining. Like, that shit almost got me, like, about to tear up. Um, it just upsets me that she's going through so much. You know, of course, she looks great on the out, on the outside, but in the inside, she's going through a lot. And then you see her son, you know, punching walls and acting as if he was going to lay hands on her with that situation. And it's like, why wouldn't you want to take that burden off your mom? Like, that's one thing that I've always tried to do with my parents. 
anytime I see them in pain, like it hurts me. And I always feel like, you know, I have to do something to, you know, try to ease their pain and just be there for them. And it it's weird to me that he, Jerez, just is like putting all this pressure on her, letting her take care of all three of his kids while he go and, you know, run around the streets and do whatever and probably impregnate more females. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's a lot. And I really feel for Marie, but she got to get rid of that damn husband of hers and she got to make those kids be responsible for their responsibilities. Now the therapist is there and he's really not saying too much, but he did ask Jerez, you know, what will make you be a better father? Like what's going to help you be a better father? And this is what Jerez said. I had to quote this. He said, well, if this situation comes to that point, I will drop everything and come and do whatever I got to do. Y'all, I rewinded that two or three times and I still don't understand what he means by that what are you talking about somebody explained to me I don't know if it's because I'm tired but it was very vague and it, he didn't give any names what is it I gotta do what I gotta do like what are you talking about none of this is what you're saying is telling me but for some reason Marie understands him maybe I'm just the one who doesn't understand but Marie seems to get it and she's smiling and she's happy off of his response but I'm just looking confused. Now, um, Peanut, baby mama number two, was like, you know, Yvette, uh, you know, I, I prefer us to be friends. I don't expect us to be besties, but I want us to be cool enough to where we can meet up and get the kids together. And Yvette was like, yeah, I'm cool with that. I don't want you to, you know, feel a vibe off of me. You know, I'm just chilling right now. I'm not acting nonchalant, but yeah, we could do that. And Maria's happy to hear that. But I'm like, Jerez, baby... We don't pray for him. I'd be feeling hopeful. Like I was feeling hopeful for him last week, but just listening to this therapy session therapy. Cause I mean, like I said, the therapist ain't saying enough for real. And I was here for him too, uh, in his first session. But nonetheless, like I said, um, it, it, Jerez is just like right now. It's a no for me, baby. Okay. It's when look, you know, I do not like you, but I'm here for this date that you want. So she going on a date with this guy named David. She said she met him out of town. More like overseas in the motherland, okay? She said after her ex moved out, she decided to book a flight and she booked a flight to Ghana. I said, baby, can I get some coins like that so I could just book flights and be out there in Africa? Like, hello, y'all support my channel so I can get on a flight, please. I'll bring one of y'all with me. <laughs> but yes, she said she met him over there and, you know, they had a really good time. They was taking pictures together, baby. They looked really good. And David is very handsome. She said that he's also divorced too. And that's not too many people her age that have been divorced. So they're basically hitting it off. She invited him to her sip and see for the uh, dental office. And she said that he lives in Seattle. But he said, you know, say less. I'm going I'm to book a flight and I'm going to come down to Mississippi. Now, um, you know, I don't really like to talk about people's teeth because, baby, I'm the last one to talk. But um, he, may, she might want to refer him to, you know, an orthodontist so he can, you know, his top row need me a little work. And so does mine, but, uh, especially the bottom one. But uh, anyway, yeah, their day was cute or whatever. Marie leaves Cedric. He is not any good for you. Um, you have a feeling that he out there cheating. You keep calling him. He not answering. He not pulling up at the house. He, he don't even care about you, girl. Go ahead. Move on for your health, for your overwhelmed being. Leave that fuck boy behind and go ahead and focus on your health, your businesses. Seek some therapy and find you another man who gonna do you right. Because, I mean, he probably don't even like women anyway. Mm-mm, 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 Tisha, Faith, girl, this outfit that you wore down at Councilman Tate's office, like, no ma'am, like, you look like somebody great auntie, that wig, the shirt, I don't even like her makeup, because it's caked on, no, like, this whole look, no ma'am, it's unacceptable, but she said that she was there to issue Councilman Tate an apology because of you know, the situation at the brunch where Karen fucked up the whole vibe. So, yeah, we're going to see how that go. All right, so Letitia said that she has hit some roadblocks. You know, ain't nobody giving her a call. She got to get, you know, all these plans in, in motion, but she can't until she see the building. So then uh, Mr. DeKeither going to ask a shady question, talk about how the brunch went. You knew how the brunch went, okay? You was there, and then you left. When it ended, I mean, she was able to share her vision, but... I mean, Karen shook up the whole thing. 
Look, the Kiva said, y'all was showing out. I don't want nothing to do with that. Tamra had to step in and be like, look, you know, I've been to several of these brunches and that has never happened before. It took a white woman to come in and act a damn fool. That was the first time and only time that her brunch had them went left. So yeah, go ahead, let her redeem herself. You know, the the word that went around Jackson. So, you know, he, he said he wanted to step back, but he's willing to give her another chance. And I'm happy to hear that. So hopefully, you know, we can get this Ferris, Ferris Street thing in motion because, baby, we, we do need to go ahead and, and see some things get done. We on episode seven. See Tambra with her 80s hairstyle with a thousand bundles and her terrible smoky eyes. She's going on a date with uh what's his name damon you know she said one of the reasons why we didn't work out was because you know the romance was gone it seems like he's been paying attention <laughs> i am on this date with this handsome young man and all i could think about was the girls like it's so disturbing to me then girl stop thinking about it i don't understand why you want to date with this man that you potentially try to have babies with and you sit here thinking about these bald head girls no you and i'm, I'm not calling them bald head literally y'all just be calling people bald head so i don't need y'all to be getting all sensitive and shit but anyway yeah girl stop stop thinking about them enjoy the date and see where it's gonna go with you on your ex base simple as that so Tamara is going to do a sister vention. She wants all the girls to come over I, to her house. So we'll actually get to see what her house looks like. But I guess she was trying to get them all to come together to see that the brunch is like, you know, a positive thing and not really paint Tisha in a, a bad light or whatever. I guess basically off of what she had got from Antoinette's uh, sage and champagne party. But anyway... Uh, the mom was like, baby, uh, enough of that. What's up with you, okay? What's going on? And she let him know, you know, my fibroid situation. I have to have surgery. You know, I'm thinking about kids. I'm just trying to figure everything out. And he was like, well, you know, I remember, you know, when we were together, part of the reason why you didn't have children was because of your career. So, you know, she was saying, I could definitely see myself settling down with Desmond. Desmond. <laughs> <laughs> like, trying to be funny Zaman, like you know all of this and i'm just like okay well you need to figure that out and also i'm gonna need you to get some new makeup i'm sorry tamper does seem like a very sweet woman however she says she's 40 sis i don't know if it's the makeup or what but you look older than that okay i'm gonna need you to get something together like something ain't right well we know that makeup ain't right we know that hair ain't right but uh it may be the makeup i'm gonna need you to get it together sis because you out here looking like you 10 years older now, I'm glad they get straight on down to this sister vention, okay? Tamra said that she invited everybody with the exception of Marie because she said, yeah, she has to realize that there is a common denominator. So, I mean, maybe, I don't know. I don't know, Marie. I don't know because we ain't seen you with the girls in a minute. So, you know, as a group, wait, or was that just last? I think that was just last episode. Anyway, nonetheless, yeah, Marie, I'm gonna need you to get your shit together because, yeah, they're gonna try to kick you out if you don't get your shit right. Now, Mel is there, though. Hey, Mel, she looks real cute. Um, They talked about the brunch and, you know, how it had went left last time. So, she was, Tamara was trying to update Latrice and Antoinette interjected and was like, oh, you mean like all of them? Shut up, girl. You only went to two. And like Tamara said, no, it don't always happen like that. First of all, you to blame for bringing that white girl to the damn brunch last time. So yeah, and Marie is the blame for the first one because she went off about that wig. So yeah, the two people who ain't there need to not be there so we can kumbaya. And then, you know, y'all can talk to these two separate. Well, not the Karen don't need to be there anyway, but y'all can talk to Marie separately so she can, you know, figure out her problems. Now, hold on, wait. Let's get this right now. Because Latrice is saying, yeah, the reason why, you know, the brunches go the way they go is because of Marie. Yada, yada, yada. You know, she's a bully. She's mean, all of that. But this is where I got to disagree. The first one, absolutely, that was on Marie. The second one, that was all your friend Antoinette because you're talking about representation or not representation, but your reputation matters. Well, you should have a negative stigma on you because of your Karen attachment, okay? You always want to bring her around everywhere and it's not always going to be a good reaction, especially when you invite her to stuff that she has no business at being. So yeah, um, Antoinette, girl, have a seat. Your friend was in the wrong and Latrice, I'm gonna need you to understand that too. You was not there for the second one. And Kayline Karen was the reason why 
that brunch went left. Marie was the one who had to, you know, stop her pity party from continuing on. I'm not understanding why Marie is the reason why y'all would stop supporting Tisha. These are two different people. And Latrice, you really about to get on my nerves. You know, I like you, but you really about to get on my nerves because you basically trying to say because she's a, a, a associated with Marie, that will cause you not to support the Fair Street project and it's it's just like what obviously you and Antoinette been talking about this because she said the same thing last week but it's like okay well then people should not be working with you or fooling with you Antoinette because you got this Karen as your tag along like I said no I don't like the way that this is going this shit sounds stupid I'm gonna need y'all to be about the bag and stop worrying about individual people and it's not even about the bag. It's about the community. Now, I need Latrice to focus back on what she said last week with Latrice. You know, she didn't have a support system. She didn't have anybody that she can go to. So you want to be that for your community, and that's the vision of Fair Street. You lose a sight of what's important. I'm really about to get annoyed now because Latrice is there. Not Latrice, but uh, Tisha is there now. And they want to get down to, you know, the brunch. And a fake-ass Antoinette, you know, I support the brunches and I love what you're doing. And all of this, you know, you know how she do with Latrice. Uh, I keep saying Latrice. That's why I call her Tisha. You know how she do with Tisha. She like to smile on her face and then kiki with Latrice about her behind her back. Now, anyway, they talking about Marie. And then Latrice goes and says, you know, she basically always got some big man energy about herself and i'm just you know paraphrasing that's not what she said but what she did say uh she said that she could never really get to understand what maria's uh you know going through or what her issue is because she'll never let her talk or some shit now the thing that got me with latrice she just said something about taking earrings and shoes off it's clear that latrice and antoinette are in well we already know they're in cahoots but obviously they're having these conversations probably with karen and they, they're talking about earrings and shoes when marie has never done that like where did y'all get this from and honestly latrice i understand why you don't want to fool with her but i don't feel like it's that big of a deal like to me it's i mean your brand is everything your business is everything she definitely tried to come for your you know your bag so i understand that but i don't feel like it's that deep for y'all to have like an intervention about marie latrice you only been around her one no you've been around her twice and then the second time she just said that she didn't want to she didn't want to fool with you she ain't really give you no energy so i'm not understanding where this huge huge problem is to where they feel like they have a they have to have an intervention and marie is like the focal point of it this is why tisha is my favorite because she said in her confi confessional i realized that this intervention is for me and they telling her she need to watch the company that she keeps now which i don't understand uh latrice and antoinette Tisha definitely talks to Maria about her behavior. She talked to her about her behavior at Tamber's birthday party. And she talked to her down, I think when they went to Tisha's house, she addressed the situation and said that nobody should make you, you know, look look evil or whatever the case may be. You know what I'm saying? So she definitely checks her friend. Y'all just don't see that. So I feel like y'all just speaking out of turn when y'all say, oh, well, you know, you, you just pacify whatever she says and whatever she does. That's not the case. No, she's definitely checking her friend. Y'all just feel like y'all want to see her cuss her friend out in front of y'all and she's not going to do that. And like she said, I know Marie has my back. Do y'all have my back? Because I know y'all are more prone to talk about me while I'm not around. And I'm like, hello? Tisha is checking that ass, okay? So she let Antoinette know, both of them know, like, hold on, wait, because word got back to me that y'all was talking about me down at your stage and, and uh, champagne party. And they was like, what are you talking about? No, we weren't, baby. Flashbacks. Yes, y'all definitely were. And that's why Tambra had to defend Tisha because y'all was sitting there trying to, you know, downplay her brunches. And that's not really what her brunches are about. So, yeah, she got them together. And then Latrice is saying, well, you know, you got to understand that you, you know, how she came at me at my brunch, she was trying to come for my brand. And Tisha had to say, well, both of y'all was acting ratchet at the brunch. And I'm going to agree with that. First of all, uh, Latrice and Antoinette, y'all did come all, y'all came there with negative energy. Let's just be real. Y'all came there with negative energy. Y'all was talking shit about everything. Y'all was whis uh, whispering and doing all of this while, you know, other things was going on. And then, yeah, that's when Marie jumped in and just the whole thing just went left. So, yeah, like Tisha said, Y'all both need to take accountability. I can't speak for Marie because she's not here. And then Latrice said in her uh, confessional, well, you know, you got to understand. You got to get rid of your friend and maybe people will um basically come around her. And it's just like, it's not that serious. Y'all acting like Marie a damn murderer.
Now, Antoinette want people to mind their business, and that was a direct shot to Tamra. And Tamra had to let her know, look, I speak about this every day on the radio, okay? I'm going to always encourage women to empower each other. If I see two bosses, I want them to empower each other. And I don't see anything wrong with that. Antoinette, I feel like you out of line. First of all, bitch, you getting up and you doing all this clapping, you can get the hell out of my house, okay? Because you the fakest bitch on this show. Let's get it right, okay? She is the fakest, most disingenuous person on this show, and I cannot stand her. Like, how dare you try to act like you just uplift women when you don't? You talk about Tisha, one of the most genuine people on this show. She has done nothing but try to support you, and you gave her fakeness from, from the beginning. I want to be there to support your brunches. I want to do this. I want to do that. Oh, I'm not going to invite her because of her association with Marie. Oh, no, I can't. Do, like, you want to talk shit about her and, and be fake so you can be friends with the trees, but then you want to talk about empowerment. Like, get out of here. She is the fakest, phoniest, corniest pitched bottom lip ass bitch like girl oh i cannot stand her baby they really starting to yell okay Antoinette it got tamra all out of herself like we ain't seen tamra like this she's been real cool and collected but you know obviously not at this point yeah, tamra asked Antoinette was she black Antoinette was like are you black you the one who never experienced colorism so they just going back and forth and teacher said in her confessional look baby this sister intervention or whatever you want to call it Baby, it was it was supposed to be for me, but it turned out it's supposed to turn around on them. And I'm just here to sip my wine. I said, okay, listen, uh, I'm going to need somebody to escort Miss Antoinette up out of there. I don't believe shit that Antoinette says. You can apologize to Tamara all day. I won't be surprised if we see you talking shit to Latrice about her next episode. So, I mean, you apologizing to me, I just feel like it's, it's, it's not genuine regardless. I was not buying none of that shit that Antoinette was giving while she wanted to talk to uh, Latrice on the side about her dental practice, talking about she's scared because of construction delays and she doesn't want to, you know, go bankrupt off of this and she wants to be a role model because representation matters and all of this. Girl, doing this fake-ass cry face dry as hell. Like, I don't know where the hell y'all get these terrible actors from, but I need people to know that you can still convey feelings without tears. Like, you do not have to fake tears to get people to understand your pain like you know what i'm saying like, anyway that was the end of the review y'all let me know what y'all thought about this mess um i hate that tamper had to get out of you know character because she does seem like the coolest one out of them i know i give her a, a hard time you know with her makeup and you know her hair but she does seem like a very sweet lady so um yeah <sighs> Let's get down in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.